Hey guys, Doug here from Motion. Today we are going to talk about different types of lines that you would use to plumb a street or a race car. We've gotten a lot of questions, in fact, in our Tech Tip Tuesdays. This is something that gets brought up a lot. And we've actually did a uh, video just kind of really lightly comparing where to use things at. Uh, I'll put that in the description below. But in the comments section, everybody asks to show more in depth the difference in the fittings, how to assemble them and uh, just kind of go a little bit deeper. So that's what this video is for. And uh, if you want to skip forward to how to assemble them, uh, in the description, it'll tell you where each style starts. So today we have our four more main types of fittings. Um, if you come closer, James, uh, you can see there's crimp fittings, which this isn't very common because uh, you'll a lot of shops will do it that do a lot of plumbing but most of you at, at home won't have this option, but we will show it because it's really cool. Uh, this is your standard AN fitting uh, that would be used for this style hose. Um, actually, both the crimp and the standard AN will use that style hose. This uh, fitting right here looks the same as this one, but it's for PTFE hose, which PTFE has a inner liner and then a, and a braided outer uh, shell. And then this last hose end is going to be for push lock, as it's commonly referred to. And that is essentially just using interference fit to uh, secure the hose to the hose end. Let's dive right in. Um, push lock. So push lock's been around for quite a while. It's a slightly uh, less expensive than the other ways. Definitely not my favorite personally, and uh, definitely not a lot of other people's favorite. Basically the downfall of it is that it is held just by the tension of the hose around these barbs. So it's very difficult to put together. Kind of a huge turnoff for a lot of people first time. There are some specialty tools. Uh, we will drop those kind of right now. Uh, there's a company called Cool Tools. It's basically just a thing that presses the two ends together, but it is an expensive tool. And uh, my, my le least favorite portion of push lock is it has a lack of a um, protective a outer braiding, I guess, for a lack of a better term. So, you know, it's less abrasion resistant in my opinion. Um, the strength and PSI it's rated for is uh, less because it has nothing clamping the hose on the outside. As far as what uh, push lock is compatible to be used with on a vehicle, uh, everything except for power steering, that's very high pressure. Uh, but again, every sanctioning body is different as far as what they allow. Um, some require an outer braiding, a steel mesh, whatever. So definitely check with your regulations because you know SCCA might be different than NHRA and IHRA and everything in between. So I don't wanna speak out of turn, but if I um, had the choice myself, this is my least favorite. It just offers less security. And then I, I know a lot of people like it and use it quite a bit, uh, but I've seen a lot of issues with it over the years personally. So we steer away from it here at Motion. In fact, we carry just a small selection of it for that reason. So the reason push lock is called push lock is because it's very simple. It just pushes on to the barbed fitting. Uh, so I'll show you how that goes together. There are some tools that make this easy. Uh, they grab each side and push them together. Some different sizes of push lock hose are easier and harder to put together as well as some brands and some fittings. It's always easier if you uh, get a little bit of silicone on there but it's as easy as this. You just work the uh, barb together. And again, that's um, some people actually put the hose in hot water or they will freeze the fittings, but that's really not ideal. At least the heating of the hose uh, can actually cause a temper issue with the hose itself. Uh, but you're basically gonna keep working this hose down until it sits against this uh, upper taper here. And uh, if it's put together correctly, this upper rubber piece will be where the hose seats into the bottom of that. So until it's all the way there, it's on shorter than suggested. Uh, if you don't get it far enough past that second barb, you can actually see it sticks up inside of there. Uh, so you wanna keep pushing it until it's all the way bottomed out. The simplest as far as the amount of different things you have to do to put it together, but it's the hardest. Your hands hurt afterwards. Unless you have that expensive tool, uh, it can be really difficult. And if you're doing a whole car's worth, a lot of people just give up in the middle of it. So um, make sure you have that tool if you're putting them together um, or you freeze the fittings or whatever, whatever. Uh, but it definitely is not easy to do without using some version of that. One of the problems is that people actually give up on pushing them all the way in because they think they're good enough and that just creates another safety issue. So um, the difficulty in putting them together actually becomes one of the dangerous sides of using that because you have a false sense of security. You're like, that's ah, not good enough. 
uh, and it might not be. So one really nice area where you can use push lock is, and it's probably the most common that I've ever used it in, is on like low pressure cooling systems like you would see on an intercooler. You can buy that uh, nominal nylon braided hose and it holds up pretty well. Just make sure you get something that's temperature rated. And then also for uh, like PCV systems or blow down tubes, a lot of guys you'll see use push lock, uh, but they will still secure them with a hose clamp just to make sure that that uh, hose that isn't actually push lock stays on there. But it's, that's all low pressure stuff. So it's basically just looking for a slight interference fit plus whatever you, you know, have to secure it. So before I move on to the next style hose, uh, one recommendation I have is to get yourself a good set of cutters. These are from All Star Performance and they're humongous, but they make cutting hose really easy and it makes a really sharp and clean cut. I know a lot of people have a lot of different methods, anywhere from an angle grinder to, uh, I've seen guys use, a, say they use a punch or uh, some type of a uh, spike or whatever to cut it off and a hammer, I don't know. Uh, but I prefer this and the reason why is it gives you a clean cut. There's no abrasive dust that gets inside of the hose. I mean, uh, plumbing is already dirty enough and it's something that you really need to be cognizant about cleaning when you're putting it together anyways. So cut off wheels and chop saws and stuff like that, I try to avoid at all costs because it just creates a lot of uh, dust that doesn't need to be there. So our next line that we're gonna go ahead and use is uh, PTFE. So I will go ahead and cut the end off real clean quick and uh, we'll get to assembling. You can see even with the stainless outer braiding, it just is such a smooth cut, doesn't fray at all, and uh, gives us a nice clean end to start working with. To the untrained eye, these two look very similar, and within brands, the way this piece is shaped is different. So the main thing is that you wanna make sure if you're assembling PTFE hose, uh, that you have PTFE fittings. Uh, they're not reversible between the two, and you'll see why. So this is a standard AN fitting, and you can see how it looks when it comes apart. Uh, this is a PTFE fitting. When it comes apart, you'll see there's actually an extra piece inside and this portion here is shaped a lot different. The PTFE hose end has uh, different components than AN fitting. So you have your main body here, you have your olive or ferrule, as a lot of people call it, and then you have your nut, much the same as what's on the AN fitting. Um, the biggest tip if you've never done a PTFE fitting is to make sure that you know to put the nut on the hose before you start working on the uh, putting the olive in. So how you do that is make sure you have a nice clean cut end as we showed earlier. And uh, you just kind of work that on and slide it back. So the next step, what we're trying to do is wedge this tapered portion um, in between the outer steel braiding and the PTFE in internally. So uh, takes a little bit. There's, there's a couple tools they sell for this that make it really easy. And this is basically the only tricky part of a uh, PTFE fitting. So definitely a place you can cut your fingers uh, <laughs> if you're doing it by hand, but it's as simple as that. And then what I would do um, is I try to get that in there as far as possible. So you can either tap it down on the table until that tubing is right there at the very top, or you can tap it with a hammer or whatever. Um, just make sure it's nice and square so that when you go to start the hose end itself, what you're working with is something that's gonna line up square. So now what all this is gonna do is go inside of this and uh, as you tighten the nut down, it's gonna just basically create a wedge between that outer and inner. And uh, yeah, you'll have a nice secure fitting that holds a lot of pressure. What you'll wanna do is get yourself a larger size center punch than this. Otherwise you're gonna end up using a screwdriver trying to like basically push that PTFE around the edge out there. Um, if you don't properly push it in, if you look inside of here, you'll see that as the center part pushed in, it actually folded over. So that's gonna create a bad seal and uh, you're likely gonna have a leak from that and or just a uh, something that'll pop up later. If it doesn't leak right off the bat, it's definitely gonna cause you issues later on down the road. So once you get that all seated and wedged out there, it's basically just gonna press inside of there and you're gonna see it's gonna sit flush. Now, one tip that you're, when you're assembling any of these hose ends, uh, you can always spray it with a little bit of silicone and do that when you're assembling the nut to the main body uh, because that's gonna keep from stripping these threads out. If you don't have them perfectly aligned and you have no lubrication 
there's a very good chance you're either gonna strip out or cross thread things a lot easier. It's a little bit right there. That's actually a lot of bit. And then we're gonna basically just work this nut onto here and uh, try and square it up best you can and get things started. Once you get things started, we're gonna go ahead, go ahead and move it over to the vise. So if you don't have a set of these magnetic vise jaws, they save your life. The nice thing is uh, they can be used this way or this way. So whatever is you know easier for you to do so that you guys can see a little bit better, I'll actually just put it in this way and uh, you just line it up, tighten it. It's aluminum, so it doesn't scratch the nut. Just try not to tighten it too tight because you might actually distort the nut, which will put pressure on the threads and uh, just another way you can strip it out. And if you do not have a set of these uh, um, AN wrenches, the best thing I can tell you is to spend money on some good ones. The cheap ones are made out of 6061 um, or worse material. And they, what they do is they just flex right here at the head. Uh, so they're definitely not all created equal. And if they flex here, you're gonna strip and gnar up your nice fittings and wish you didn't do that. So spend a little bit of money, do some investigation and uh, buy a good, one, a good set. There's also a company named Heat Shield Products. They have a nice set of carbon fiber ones, which are really cool if you're assembling um, fittings on the car, as a lot of times you are. They are carbon fiber, so they A, don't ding things up when you hit them like against a fender or whatever, and B, uh, if you touch electrical things with them, they're not gonna short out. So with all these hoses, when you're assembling them, you always wanna make sure that the hose isn't pushing out. There's always that opportunity. That'll obviously create a bad situation. And from here, all you're gonna do is tighten your uh, main body to the B nut. It's gonna create that interference that we're looking for. And you'll basically either wanna bottom it out or go as far as you can till it's very, very tight as possible. Um, if it's not tight and you have a big gap in this area, uh, it's probably not compressed enough to create a real great seal, especially on AN hoses, but also on PTFE. And what you have at the end is a uh, good solid connection. And uh, with PTFU, you can, it can hold huge amounts of pressure. So the one difference in PTFE and uh, regular AN hose, they both have industry standard sizings and specifications. Um, but right off the bat, if you look at them, um, when you pull PTFE hose, these are both number eight. Uh, so you can see the, the nut on the side of the, um, the fitting is the same size. So they're obviously the same size. They're substantially different in OD. And so when a lot of people pull it out of the package, they, they basically call us and say, you sent me the wrong size hose. We say, no, we didn't. Um, we go back and forth a couple times. We ask them to measure it. Then they realize that it actually is smaller outer diameter. So because the inner thickness is so much less because PTFE is a lot thinner, they're able to make the OD a lot smaller. So just some little tip for you guys. Um, if I hadn't said it already, PTFE fittings go with PTFE hose, AN fittings go with AN hose. Uh, there's no mixing them up as far as hose ends go. They have to be used together. So if you don't have that olive and nut, then uh, it's not gonna be right for the PTFE hose and you're gonna be calling asking things. So we try our best if we see somebody buying a bunch of AN, just standard AN hose, buying PTFE fittings or vice versa to call the customer. That's one of the things we do here. So we don't send you a bunch of mismatched stuff that delays your product, but uh, just make sure you're paying attention when you're ordering. Uh, they look the same. Um, you can easily mix them up and uh, you just wanna make sure you get it right the first time. So now we have your standard AN uh, fitting. This is very the most common by far um, and it's gonna use a standard braided hose, standard AN style fitting. It's just a two piece. There's no ferrule or uh, olive inside of it. And uh, basically what these do is they wedge uh, the hose in the, from the inside outward and it just creates a press fit between here and uh, inside of here. So before we uh, assemble this, we will go ahead and cut a clean end on our hose because that's what you should always start with and then we'll assemble it. So then all you're basically going to do with this style hose, you can see that there's a steel inner braiding. Fergola by far has the nicest black braided uh, nylon hose. And the reason why I like nylon braided is because it doesn't reverberate sound and heat as much as stainless does. Uh, it looks more modern and uh, it still has abrasion resistance because of the nylon braiding on the outside. So basically what we're gonna do now that we have a clean cut, we're gonna push this into the backside and you can actually see a ledge down at the bottom of the threads 
we're going to push the hose. Uh, you can twist it slightly if you need to right to the bottom there. So you can see that a nice square cut is necessary. If you have it cut offset, it's actually going to hang up on one side and sit down on the other, which is going to make it difficult, a worse seal and more difficult to assemble. At this point, we're going to be ready to assemble it. So we're going to go ahead and stick it in the vise here. Um, this one I'll do vertical just because I think it'll be more visible for where you guys are at. And uh, the hardest part about a standard AN style hose is getting that wedge started in the small portion on the bottom. And as I said before, you want to go ahead and put some lubrication on it so it can get, uh, it just goes together much easier. And uh, you're just going to push the wedge while you're holding the hose. Uh, if you push it down, it'll just push the hose right out the bottom without holding the bottom or the hose into the, um, into this end. So push upward, push downward, and then basically start pressing it slightly downward and you want to make sure you get it started without cross threading. Uh, this can be kind of difficult sometimes. Um, but again, if you use a little bit of uh, oil or silicone, it starts to go together pretty quick. So on a standard AN style hose like this, when you're assembling it, it's more important to hold the hose in because you're trying to wedge it way more than you were with the PTFE. So you want to go ahead and just have a good firm grip on it, especially as you're starting to, to seat it in the beginning. And then from there, it gets a little bit easier. But basically, all you're going to do is take your wrench. And again, we're going to run this thing all the way down until it hits the uh, bottom down here. It'll start to get really difficult, especially depending on what size hose end. This one's actually all the way seated. I like to try and line up the flats. So that is an all done AN hose. So one of the ways that you can tell it actually, it was assembled incorrectly or that it pushed out is, um, if it pushed out, a lot of times when you look at it right here, the hose won't be coming out straight. It'll be kind of slightly cocked. Uh, or obviously you can start to tug on it. It'll usually pull apart. So this is a good quality assembly and ready to go on a car. The next one we are gonna do is a crimp style fitting. As I said before, if you have a shop and you do a lot of um, fittings and a lot of plumbing, this thing will pay itself off very fast. It's not cheap. I think they're a few thousand dollars and then the dies cost extra, but the amount of time savings, you know, you can take a fitting from several minutes to a few seconds as far as assembly time. You get a lot cleaner uh, connection. In my opinion, it's just way less troublesome. Each size hose end has a different size crimp, so you'll have a you'll have to grab the right size one of those, um, load it in here. Definitely make sure you have the spacer or support in the bottom of it. First time we ever did it, we didn't have that in there, and it actually bent the dies. So that's an ex that's a costly mistake. But then after that, you usually don't get rid of them. Uh, this is actually going to use the same style hose as we use with the Fergola. Uh, regular hose end. So that's the nice thing about Fergola. You don't have to have a bunch of different hoses. You get all the same benefits of this hose. Uh, without getting too salesy, the reason I like Fergola and this black AN hose is this hose, contrary to a lot of other manufacturers, without being PTFE and all that stuff, is actually will hold up to ethanol and methanol fuels. So that's huge in today, ethanol and methanol for racing. It's becoming a widely used fuel for all different sports, especially for late model EFI stuff and boosted applications. So the fact that you don't have to have all the trouble with PTFE hose and the expense of it is very expensive in comparison to standard AN hose, and you still have something that will hold up to that type of fuel is a, is a huge thing. So again, before we start to put this together, we're gonna clean the end of the hose up and have a nice square end. This one looks like it was gnawed on by uh, some type of wild animal. Teddy. By Teddy. Uh, so next thing on these, all you're gonna do is get that uh, inner barb lined up and just push it in and rotate it till it stops. Perfect. So now it's ready to go in the machine. One of the downsides of this machine is that to take advantage of how fast it is, you need an airline uh, because it's air over hydraulic, but they do have a hand pump that you can use for it too. So if you really wanted to put one in your trailer, you could uh, to repair lines or build new lines. So you always wanna make sure your dies are lubricated and that's basically gonna make sure that this piece doesn't gall up when it travels down uh, the wedge shape that they are. So now that we got that done, you don't have to do that every time, uh, just when you get a die out and if it isn't lubricated, you'll wanna do it. So from now, we just wanna go ahead and stick this in there. So you'll wanna put that, that line basically right 
at the top or just slightly below where these fingers come up and uh, make sure everything's nice and square. And then you're gonna go ahead and hit your pedal. So once this gets real close to touching this section here, is when it's gonna start clamping down. So you'll wanna make sure it's right and uh, squared and center before you get going. And then it's gonna hit, uh, you're gonna see it turn a light on and stop the machine. You're gonna flip the pedal the other way. Pop this up. And you can either pull the hose out the top or pull it out the bottom. Um, you can take that off, it makes it a lot easier. And what you have is a nice crimped hose end. So there you have it guys, all the different styles uh, summarized into one video. Uh, as far as usage and preference, I won't get into it because everybody has their own, but at least now you can see what they're used for, uh, the differences and how they go together and uh, why they're not compatible to use the different fittings within each other. And now you can make your own decision on what you want to use for your project. If you have questions or concerns, definitely give us a call. Our uh, phones are on eight to five, Monday through Friday, and uh, our guys would be happy to help and refer you into the right style hose for the right style situation. We have a full line of Fergola fittings and hoses. They're made in the USA and they're great products. I will also put a link in the description below to that so you can actually shop and uh, take a look at what we carry. And if you have any other questions, also drop them in the comments below. We'll be happy to answer them as best we can on here. Until next time, guys, thanks for tuning in. Do not forget to hit that subscribe button if you're new to the channel. We would love to have you.